no one will who can stand against the king no I want to celebrate your birthday in a good way elder Nat heavenly I know you're gonna have a good one year birthday I'm wake out of she sleep who did I miss somebody sister Justine tomorrow hey man we got some cake and ice cream deep Ah, oh, hey, I, I did I did three miles yesterday, so I'm ready for some. I got I'm gonna get it in the day too, so I'm ready for some cake and ice cream birthday people. So I, I keep my 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 weight down so I can eat more. <laughs> hey man, I think I'm getting my wife's heart. Hey man, get that get the heart of my wife and be able to eat more. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. But uh, we have visitors today. Hey Amen, brother. How you doing? Doing well. Amen. Glad to see you. It's been a while we, since we talked. And as we talked, I think you got an Air Force buddy that just walked in here. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead. Would you please stand and, and introduce yourself and tell us about you, brother? <clears throat> Go ahead, sir. I'm David Evans. Wow. I've had impression me throughout this time. I am military, um, coming from Alaska, but Charleston is my home. My wife and I, we have some three foster kids. And uh, um, we are members at uh, Word of God Church and Ministries, but it's just um, a good time to just uh, celebrate and worship God with your brothers wherever you are. So Amen. thank you for welcoming me, and I really appreciate the invitation. Amen. It's Air Force, right? Air Force, right? Yeah, hey, amen. You got another, like I tell you, you got a Bart, raise your hand. <laughs> they go another fella airman. <laughs> but mostly Army rules, right? <laughs> You're in the house with the Army personnel. Hey, amen. <laughs> you, you, we the ones that really work. <laughs> hey, amen, hey, amen. But what I want, if we all got victory, as the song so graciously put us in, I want you going to put that victory into somebody else's life as you meet them. But before you do that, top of the mountain, what do we say to our visitors? Welcome, and we love you. But remember, God loves you the most. Go ahead and greet somebody in love and put that victory into them. Because <laughs> victory belongs to Jesus. jack him up man hey shake him loose deke shake that brother loose he too tight <laughs> he too tight man loosen up man come on bro
Amen. 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 You know, it's always good when when your people come back from deployment. And you come back from deployment and be in the be in the right mind. Our prayers was with you, brother. Your prayers was with you. You got anything that you want to share with us? Just happy to be back. Amen. So, gone for seven months. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't at home, but I was still in the Middle East. Um, just being gone from your family, that kind of thing. You know, you know, wife, kids, you know, mom, dad, but I knew God had a plan in time. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Uh, he brought me back mentally stable, you know, emotionally stable, financially stable. Go ahead. So, Woo! Give me praise. I'm just grateful. You know, I got Amen. all the things in legs. Amen. 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 We're glad to have you back. Amen. 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 It's a good thing, as he said, to be in your right mind. It's so many that we see come back from combat and come back from deployment that's not in their right mind. That's not in their right mind or have the activities of all their limbs or get to enjoy a good sound sleep. Something is always eating at a lot of them. The things that some of you just don't understand what they see. The life that they go through when they are apart from a family and we don't and some don't understand how the family is on the other end night and day. Thinking about their loved ones that's gone, not departed, but gone away from us. So it's good to hear the first thing he said, the right mind. We thank God for having us in our right mind. Amen. I'm still trying to catch my breath. That heavenly hype man with the praise and worship team just wore us out. Amen. I see why y'all be at practice. What y'all be doing, y'all, y'all don't be practicing singing. Y'all be trying to get together and sing because y'all falling under the anointing so hard. If y'all, if that's what y'all do at practice, practice. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Alan Iverson had the nerve to say something about not practicing. <laughs> Come on, man. Y'all did a whoo. <laughs> And I'm trying not, I'm holding the camera because I want to record it. I'm trying not to get the Holy Spirit in me. <laughs> I had to stop recording because Sister Justine was shaking. I want to make sure she wasn't going to fall through the stage up here, boys. <laughs> hey, man, you know something about that anointing, boy. It's something about it. I know if you came in here with an issue, it's gone. Brother, if anybody came in here wasn't in their right mind, they now in their right mind because the praises go up <laughs> and they came down a double for your anointing. I think it, I received a double portion of that anointing today, boy. That was good. I want, I just want to take my time today, and, and since I'm gonna take my time, I might not get finished. And you'll know when I'm finished today because I'm going to ask y'all a question and then you know what I'm going to say. If you want to hear the rest, come back on next week. But I can almost say that now because of what just took place. We already had church. We already had church. The anointing already flew. I think think y'all ready to go. Some of you already going to take a nap already because you don't got wore out. I'm in that number. I'm hungry already and ain't did nothing. (laughs) <laughs> gracious lord heavenly father please let my vow my voice stay father god so i can deliver your word lord let the words that come out of my mouth be anointing from your hand to mine lord god let everything that's done today father god fall under your anointing and let it flow breast to breast father god let every ear receive the instructions that you have for them to receive lord god let the voices ring out in this place, Lord God. 
Let your Shekinah glory, Father God, fall down on us, Lord God, and cover this place, Lord God. In your son Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hey, glory, Jesus. As I had my eyes closed, all I could just picture was the roof being on fire. With the anointing. <laughs> it told me a light on the hill can't be hid. <laughs> the anointing can't be hid in you. Hey, man, can I, can I just teach today a little bit? I want to set a background for us. This one, when I set the background, just look at your neighbor and say, don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. <laughs> uh, Pastor T is already resonating in your spirit, huh? You all know the story a lot. And undoubtedly, when we tell the story a lot, the first thing everybody go to is his wife. And everybody want to say something about his wife. But we don't really know the whole story, what took place. All we know is that she looked back. And as she looked back, it made me start to think, why did she look back? Why do we all look back when we go through something? When we get into a place of time and we hurting Pastor Archie, all the first thing we do is look back. What is it that makes us look back? back I think about Lot and, and when, when, the, when, when he was told by the two angels to go to the mountainside to, to, to take residence in the mountainside when Lot said I don't want to go in there because it's too harsh for me I just want to go next door yeah. and this, this, this little place right here that won't take me far away Where didn't, why didn't he want to go far away what drew him to stay near? Or should I say, why don't we want to move away from what used to be? God, go ahead, Pastor. What keeps us going back or drawing us back to certain situations that used to be in our lives? You know some of these things that used to bother us. We had an ex that we don't want to go too far from. Because if it didn't work out with the new one, I can always fall back <laughs> on the X. You, you know how it is, Pastor Archie. I, I go too far. I can't make that midnight call because now I'm too far. Why did Lot did not want to move farther away? Because he was too comfortable being close to what he used to have. Go ahead now. Go ahead. Amen. You can't bring the old you, or let's put it this way. I can't put new wine in, in, in old wine skins. Mm -hmm. So you can't bring your old mindset or your old church you into a new church setting. Go ahead now. What you used to do at the other church won't work at top of the mountain. What you used to do when you used to be out there in the world won't help you in top of the mountain. Amen. Because it says, behold, I'll put away all things. And all things have become new to me. So when I got rid of my old thinking and became a new person in Christ, <laughs> when I became new, washed new, the, all the dirt that I used to do is now gone. You know what we used to do. We, ha we, we have one friend here and have a number number here. I'm talking to us, fellas. I'm talking. The, the ladies didn't do this. They just received the call. But we can have a friend that we talk to if they didn't do us right. We can call somebody that guaranteed we know would do what you wanted them to do that's why we always looking back because we can't get rid of the old stuff because we don't want to become new because we don't want to come righteous we don't want to be sold out or as as we heard them say we don't want the victory as sister just thinks so and pastor archie put it victory belongs to jesus 
But we looking to win our way. And not his way. Victory belongs to Jesus. So if I would ever endeavor to give this message a topic. Leave and don't look back. Leave and don't look back. So if you got your Bibles, please turn to Genesis. I'm going to be kind of schizophrenic with this message. I'm going to start in one place, but then I'm going to jump back to another place to get us back to where I started. So we can get an understanding of what God is doing in this time. But if you have your Bibles, please stand, stand when you get to Genesis chapter 19. And if you don't have a Bible, please share with your neighbor. And of course, what I say, if your neighbor don't have a Bible, it's time to what? Change neighbors. Change neighbors. Genesis chapter 19, and I'm going to start with verse 23, and endeavor to go down to verse 26, and when I get to 26, you may rest in the presence of the Lord. The sun has risen over the land when Lot reached out to Zohar. Then the Lord rained burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the sky. He overthrew these cities, the entire plain. All the inhabitants of the cities and whatever grew on the ground. Remember what I said last week, whenever you see the word but in scripture, whatever took place is now about to change on you. Verse 26, but his wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. He said that, but his wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. I told you I was going to jump back to really understand or put a stamp on this message. I have to go back to, to uh, Genesis 18. And we go back to Genesis 18 and I'm going to start with verse 20. And it says that, <clears throat> excuse me. As soon as my eyes focus. Then the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is immense. And their sin is so extremely serious. He said the sin and the outcry is so immense and so bad that these people was nothing righteous in them. That whatever they did, it was nothing right about it. But, but let's go back. I said, let's go back to what we just read. He said that he wiped out everything in Sodom and Gomorrah. He said the ground, the food, the people. So he didn't find nobody righteous in there. Everybody in that place was something of an issue. Go ahead. And God said, I can't deal with them. I want you to think about how we live today. If everybody thinks that, 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 that homosexuality is righteous, or, or let's say how the government wants you to, at, uh, um, what I want to say, to acknowledge it, God has to go back and tell Solomon Gomorrah that I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. The government wants you to be at peace to what's taking place. But don't get me wrong now. Sin is sin. Homosexuality is no different from adultery. It's homosexuality is no different from stealing or killing and murder. It's sin. Amen. But God says that, that if I see this any different, I have to go back and tell them that I'm sorry. But the government wants you to be comfortable with it. It's okay for a woman and a woman to get married. It's okay for a man and a man to get married. It's okay. But God said it is not okay because I had to wipe out a whole entire nation because of the impurity that sets in their heart. Amen. Amen. 
It was wrong then and it's wrong now. I don't dislike the homosexuals. I don't dislike the gays. I don't dislike that community. I dislike the sin. And if I don't teach and preach, if you don't teach and preach against it, you're wrong. I'm wrong. It's wrong. Plain as day. It's wrong. So then he says, in verse 21, he says, I will go down to see if they have done justifies, the, if, if they have done justifies the cry that has come up to me. If not, I will find out. The men turned from there and went towards Sodom with Abraham, remained standing there for the Lord. Abraham stooped toward, forward and said, will you really swept away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? So now Abraham is trying to find some righteous people amongst them. He said, if it's 50, will you wipe them out? And God said, okay, if you find 50. Then Abraham started to, he started to bargain with God now. He said, okay, God, you said if it's 50, you will sell. So what about now if it's 45? God said, okay. And then Abraham, once again, now he's trying to bargain with God. How many of us, when we do in our sin, try to bargain our way out of the punishment that God has bestowed upon us? How do we bargain with God? God said, okay, 35. Then he came back. Lord, if you say 35, what about 30? He did all this all the way down to 10. Trying to bargain with God. But then what we see, he, he did all the way to 10, and we jumped to back to 19. And it says in um, Genesis 19 and 1, it says, Two angels entered Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting at Sodom's gate. So if he went from 10 to verse 19, what does that tell you? That it was not found any in that city. Abraham bargained with God all the way to 10 and God said I still haven't found any so now I have to send my two angels to do what I said for them to do because there's no righteousness that's found how many churches that we walked into and people have not found any righteous people in a church starting from the pastor None, Pastor Archie. They ain't find any righteous because they don't have it in their heart to be righteous. Abraham said. And then it says, Lot was sitting at the Sodom's gate. When Lot was sa and said to them, get up to meet them. Do you know what took place at the city gate? I mean, at the gates, this is where all the business took place. This is where all the important people took place, uh, were met. And they would be at the gate. This is where Lot was at. With all the people of Sodom sitting there with the men doing business as they do. Gentlemen, we know what happens in the locker room. What we, what, what's the talk in locker rooms? where the business talk takes place, especially when we're younger. This is what's taking place at the gates. Men talking about their concord, what they did last night, and who they did it with, sitting at the gate. This is the kind of talk. Verse number two, I, I, I tell you what, I'm really going to take my time now. Verse number two, and he said, my lords, turn aside to your servant's house. Wash your feet and spend the night. Then you can get up early and go your way. No, they said, we would rather spend the night in the square. They told Lot, I, we don't want to stay at your house. We'd rather spend the night in the square. 
But then he went on to say, but, the, but he urged them so strongly that they followed him and went into the house. He prepared a feast and baked unleavened bread for them, and they ate. He convinced these men to stay with him. Because I told you, Lot was friends with these people in that community. Lot knew what their mindset was. Lot said, I don't want you to stay in that square. And I, he said it undoubtedly, he said, because I know my friends are kind of freakish. And I don't want you to be out there with them because of the what they do and what and how they prepare to do it. So I convinced them to stay. And I don't know if I'm going to do this because I get lost this way. What verse did I leave? Thank you, Pastor T. All right, let's go to five. We'll go back to four. Before they went to bed, the men of the city of Sodom, both young and old, the whole population surrounded the house. The whole population, both old and young. None of them had the right mindset. Because undoubtedly they all sat together and talked together and they understood what was the, the protocol of this unholy city. They knew what they were doing and they knew it wasn't right. Or a lot knew it wasn't right. They didn't. Because you know what happened to us? We get so accustomed to doing wrong that we think right is wrong. I mean, wrong is right. We forget what right is when we do wrong so long. We forget the process. <laughs> Verse number five. They called out to Lot and said, where are the men who came to you, you tonight? Send them out to us so we may have and I'm going to tell you how my Bible says it. Sex with them. This is what they call in Lot and sin. Send them out. Lot went out to them and at the entrance and shut the door behind them. Lot, Lot came out that door. He opened that door. And soon he, said, he shut that door quick. <laughs> He said, y'all can't come in here. They were under my protection. They are my house guests. Yeah. When anybody come into the top of the mountain Christian ministry, they are your guests. How dare you treat your guests wrong? Amen. You cannot treat people that come into your house wrong if, if the anointing are on them. Amen. That's, the key. That's how you allow them in. Because you just don't let any old thing come into your kingdom, mm -hmm. which is your house. I don't want anything dropped off or deposited into my house. Because you don't know what's on a person. Oh, amen. Protect your kingdom. Protect your house. Lot went out to them at the entrance and shut the door behind him. He said, don't do this evil, my brothers. Love Look, I've got two daughters who haven't had sexual relationship with a man. I'll bring them out to you and you can do whatever you want to them. However, don't do anything to these men because they have come under the protection of my roof. Brothers, especially you married brothers, what wife is going to listen to you? When you say that they can have your daughter. None. What wife are going to sit there and be cool about you giving your daughter to some perverted men and boys? I know Pastor Wendy ain't going to have that. And I know a majority of y'all ladies are not going to have that. What you talking about? <laughs> your God-given mind. There, it'd be a fight up in there. But that, te listen, <laughs> listen to the mind. What is the mindset of Lot if he even thought about giving his daughters? Remember, I told you, he sat at the gate with them. Does our environment infect what happens to us? 
He said, don't do this evil, my brothers. I have two daughters that's virgins and you can have them. The personality of Lot to even think about giving his babies to these animals. These weren't people, these were animals. Get out of the way, they said. Adding this one came here as a foreigner, but he's acting like a judge. Now we'll do more harm to you than to them. They put pr pressure on Lot and came up to break down the door. How much more harm can they do to Lot when they already planned on raping two men? Now they said that we're going to do more harm to you than we ever thought about doing to them. Because Lot is trying to protect something that came into his house. But the angels reached out. Brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. When you think that something's going to get you, even if you're not in your right mind, watch God yank you out of that situation. Amen. Amen. Watch God protect you from the harm that you didn't even know that was coming your way. Yeah. Even when you weren't in the right situation. You're going to learn today that, that God has done some things for you that you never thought was going to take place in your life. When you thought it was time for you to be taken out. When you thought that God wasn't going to do nothing. Yeah. God was right there. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to see God tell Lot that, that I'm going to allow nothing to take place until you get to safety. So saying that, just think what God has protected you from until you got to where you needed to be. Amen. God said that I am going to stop whatever is going to come against you until you get to the place that I appointed for you to be. And you didn't know. He stopped harm from coming against you. Then he goes on to say, but the angels reached out and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. They struck the men who were at the door of the house, both young and old, with a blinding light. So they were unable to find the door. Y'all missed that. I think you just missed that. They were struck by blindness, but they were still trying to find the door. I don't know about you, if some blindness came upon me, the first thing I want to do is trying to find out how or what is going on. But see how sin gets on your life? They so perverted and messed up, they didn't even think about the blindness. They still trying to get into the door and trying to get these men. They got tired. And some of your translations said they got tired trying to get at the door. Trying to get deeper into sin. Sin comes upon your life. You don't even realize how ugly or how much it covers your life. Yeah. They got tired. Trying to get at these men. It didn't even take a pause because they was blinded. What in the world? <laughs> they still trying to get at them. Then the angel said to Lot, do you have anyone else here a son-in-law your sons and your daughters or anyone else in the city who belongs to you get them out of this place undoubtedly when we read the story we only thought Lot only had two virgin daughters but if we look at the story Lot had two other daughters and two son-in-laws. And it shows me, it says sons also. So what it tells me about the sons is that they're not in the camp or they're not there with him. But the da two daughters, the two virgin daughters, and two son-in-laws are with him. So he's trying to get them out of the camp. But if you continue to read on in that scripture... He did not hurry. He took his time to get out. 
He took he was not trying to rush out of the city as the angel said you need to hurry and get out. How often has God warned us that we need to get away from this sin and we need to move right away? How often has he told you, you need to get away from that young lady because she means you no good. You need to get away from this young man because he is not good for you. But we take our time and move away from the situation. God said, I need to, you to move now. But we wait and tarry on his word. We don't take his word as a, as a right now God. But God said, I'm going to tell you again, but this time, guess what? The angels grabbed Lot and pulled him out. God said, don't make me have to pull you out. Don't make me have to chastise you. Don't make me have to do this my way. God said, the first time I gave it to you, I said, I gave it, given it to you in a manner that's good for you. But if I have to come in, I'm going to take away some things. I'm going to kill all some things that hinder you from the move. Why you think some of us are divorced? Why you think somebody's died when they didn't have to? God said, if I got to do these things, sometimes it's not the way that you think that I'm going to do it. Amen. I'm going to have to make an example. And show you how I do things mm -hmm. if you don't listen. Mm -hmm. How I first instructed you how to do it. So just move when he say it. But see, that's part of your growing aspect too. Because it says, my sheep know my voice. So if you don't know the voice, you ain't going to move when you hear the voice. And I ain't talking about that one that come on TV that everybody rushed to watch. It's the voice, right? Okay, it's the voice. I thought I was wrong. I thought I was in my own world again. Then it goes on and says, the angel said to Lot, do you have anyone else? Verse 13, for we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against its people is great before the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. The outcry. What is the outcry? The sin that's upon this place is so great. The sin is taken over and there is no righteous there. There's no loving there. God had to destroy. God said, guess what? I didn't even want a remnant to return from this place. God says, I don't want nothing to grow from this bad seed. God said, I have to even destroy the ground that, 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 that brings forth fruit. God said, the fruit that will come forth from this place is not good. So I cannot allow anything to come forth out of this place. And we heard testimonies about churches that, that we have left before the ground has gotten tore up. And nothing good came out of it. Amen. But see, we have to move when we hear. Yes. God says move. We don't want to be caught up in that, in that destruction or, or that, that, that bad place where we're now unable to change for God. Amen. We all tore up. We all messed up. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't hear God. And we're left around with the remnant of the bad seed. The angels told Lot to get out. So verse 14, it says, So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who were going to marry his daughters. Get up, he said. Get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy it. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. They thought he was joking. They thought he was joking. When a man and woman of God comes to you and give you a word. It, did you hear what I said? When a man and woman of God comes to give you a word, bank on it. Amen. Stand on it. Yes. Amen. That's how you get to drive in your new vehicle. Amen. That's how you get to walk into the new place that's coming your way. That's how come you get to walk in your healing. Yeah. 
That's how come Elder Nett is going to be who God says she's going to be. She's going to be the head teller at the bank. Stand on it. Don't think they're joking. But see, what happens is a lot of times because we don't believe the word for ourselves, we think the man or woman of God is joking. And we just laughed ourselves out of a blessing. We just forfeited what was promised to us by God. <laughs> they were, he was joking. At the crack of dawn, the angel, verse 15. At the crack of dawn, the angels urged Lot. Get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. Move away from those unhealthy relationships. Move away from the ungodly friends that don't want to hear the cry is what it's saying. Or you'll be swept away with their sins. Verse 16. But he hesitated. So because of the Lord's compassion for him, the men grabbed his hand, his wife's hand, and his, in the hands of his two daughters. And they brought him out and left him outside of the city. Come here, Deke. What happened to Lot was the angel said, go. Get out. But he stood there because something in the city was more important than the cry or the leading of the Lord. Or should I say the call of the Lord to come. Something in that city was dragging him or holding him in place. But God said, watch, I love you and I care for you. So I ain't going to tell you no more. What now I'm going to do is just do it my way and pull you out of this place. God said, I got to take you where you don't want to go. Because you need somebody that got some common sense that gets you out of your mess. Because you can't do it yourself. Because you want to stay where you're comfortable at. Get out of your comfort zone. But you got to remember, God ain't always going to rest with you. But he, sometimes he's just saying, I got to pull you out of your mess because you don't have the wisdom to get yourself out of the dung. And that's poop for our younger people. You want to stay in the mess because some reason you like the way it smells. I'm just saying what the word says. Don't shoot me down when I'm preaching, right? As soon as the angels got them outside, one of them said, run for your lives. Run, Forrest, run, is what he said to them. Run for your life. And it says, don't look back. And don't stop anywhere on the plain. Run to the mountains or you'll be swept away. And here we go again. Verse number 18. But, and what is but? Change. It changes was about what previously it took. So Lot says, but, I got a reason with you, God. Hey, can I just give you my thought process on this whole matter? God, I think I know what's best for me. Why should I listen to you, God, and I've been doing this from, on my own so long? He says, but, Lot says, no, Lord, please. No, God, not your way. My way is better, Lord. Not, not what you want me to do, Lord, but let me do it my way because I've been doing this thing my way so long. And then he says, your servant has indeed found favor in your sight. He had enough wherewithal to know he had favor with God, so now he wants to, now he wants to barter with God. <laughs> and you have shown me great kindness by saving my life. So if I have saved your life, why are you still putting a proverbial butt in my face? Why are you still butting me if, you, if I've saved your life and I've shown you favor? But I can run to the mountains. 
The disaster will overtake me and I will die. Who told you that you're going to die if you go to where God says you to go? If God is going to send you somewhere, don't you think he's going to provide for you? If God just said that I want you to go to this place, don't you think God's will, his bill? Amen. God is not going to send you somewhere that he wants you to go unprotected or unresourced. God says, I am your provider. I am Jehovah Jireh to you. I will provide everything that you need if you do it the way I told you to do it. God says this. Then he says in verse 20, look, this town is close enough for me to run to. It is a small place. Please let me go there. It's only a small place, isn't it? See, he tried to qualify it. He tried to get God to change what he wanted. He said, isn't it? You, you know how the kids, when they want something from him, it's, or, or watch this. My wife said, it's only on sale. <laughs> it's not the full price, isn't it? <laughs> but the small things add up when things take place outside of the will of God. So that I can survive. Is what he said. Then verse 21. And he said to him. All right. I'll grant your request. About this matter. To and will not overthrow the town. You mentioned. Let's look at that right there. He said all right. I will grant you your request. And I won't destroy the place that you mentioned. I will protect you even there. So. God says, I'm so loving, I'm going to let you make a decision outside of the decision that I've already placed on you. And I'm not going to mess you up when you get there. I'm still going to provide for you when you get there. All right? <laughs> you see that? I ain't lost you yet, right? And then he says, and he said to him, all right. And then verse 22, he said, hurry up, run there, for I cannot do anything until you get there. Therefore, name of the city is Zohar. He said, run there. <laughs> Pastor T, you got, on, you got on your dress. I ain't going to bother. Come here, Michael. He said, run there. <laughs> he said, run there. And I will not destroy nothing until you get there. Get them old bones moving. <laughs> he still missed that. So why I'm on my way, a car accident took, took, took place. It did not harm me because I haven't got there yet. Somebody was shot in a drive-by, but it did not affect me. Because I haven't got there yet. Right. Oh, let, let's say it this way. I should have been dead and gone. But his love and mercies kept me. Amen. When, when my friends was on crack. And I used to hang with them. But I did not get affected by it. Yeah. Yeah. When they got put in jail. And I didn't get sent to jail. Yeah. <laughs> because I hadn't got there. Oh, come on. When? When the rest of them was divorced and I'm still married. <laughs> That's the grace and mercy of God. Hurry up and get there. But nothing is going to take place or happen to you because I got you, said God. Amen. You are protected by me, is what he said. <laughs> I don't care what takes place around you or whatever everybody else is doing. It won't happen to you because I got you. Says God. <laughs> and he said to him, all right, I'll grant you this request about his master too. And will not overthrow the town you mentioned. Hurry up, run there. For I cannot destroy anything until you get there. So when, when you pass by and you listen to the radio, I was just past that. I just was there two minutes ago. And it wasn't an accident. Because I hurried up on my way. 
I listened to the voice that called me and direct me. He said, move now. I got to the place where God says I needed it to be. And so when I passed that place, God said, see, I protected you. And anything that happened, anything, anytime that you wasn't there, is because I had my hands on you. Yes. Is what he's saying. <laughs> Run there. I cannot do anything until you get there. Therefore, name the cities. Verse 22. The sun had risen over the land. Then Lot reached Zor. And the Lord raised a burning sulfur on Solomon and Gomorrah. From the Lord, the Lord out of the sky. He overthrew these cities. The entire plain. All the inhabitants of the cities. And whatever grew on the ground. But his wife looked back. And became a pillar of salt. Say, but his wife. When you look at this word and you, and you look at it and you first read it. And a lot of times as, as husbands and wives and it says look back. We're looking on the past of each other. What we used to do. What I used to be. But this is not what they're talking about right here in this scripture. He said, it undoubtedly says that when she looked back, it tells me that she was not with Lot. Mm -hmm. She was either ahead of him or way behind him. Mm -hmm. But whatever it was, she was not under the covering of her husband. Mm -hmm. She was on her own Amen. doing what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. See, if she was with her husband... Stand up, you two. Come here for a second real quick, D. But if she was with the cut, look that way. Sis. Yeah, both of y'all look that way. If she was with, with the covering of her husband, Sister Justine, see, you see what happened? <laughs> everybody see that yeah if she was with, with the covering of her husband and I said sister Justine yeah glory her man of honor her man of valor her good thing her boo <laughs> yeah he would have stopped her from looking back and falling into the trap and the temptations of what the enemy had for he would have stopped her because he said this is my boo this is my rib. This is my good thing. I cannot allow Amen. Satan to do anything to her. Amen. So he stopped her Amen. in her tracks. She tried to look. <laughs> he said, uh-uh. No, baby, no. You got to stay with me. I'm watching. I'm leading. I'm directing by the Lord's guidance. So what that just told me that you got to be a man of God to lead your household. You got to be under the anointing of God to keep that woman where she's supposed to be. So something was wrong. But so that also go on to study that word out. It, it, it might tell me that she was doing what was accustomed to her. What she seen her husband do. Because he was sitting at the gate with all the riffraffs with all the unsaved and with all the dirtiness of that area so she was just doing what the head of the house was doing if your children does contrary to your word what, are, what do they see? Not just what they hear. So what are they seeing you do? Because you're the man. God appointed man. Amen. And they're supposed to follow. Yes. Your example. Amen. You know that you look at that scripture said train them up. Train the, children, the child up in the way they should go. If they, and when they get old they should not depart. But are we not God's children? Amen. Are we not God's children? So we're still getting trained up. 
in the way that we should go. And when we get old, we should not depart. We always want to throw these on to our children. But God says, I'm throwing it back on to you. Are you going to depart when you get mature in my word? And we're not just talking about your age. We're talking about the maturity level in his word. Leave, but don't look back. In Jesus' name. Give God some praise in here. Come on now. Give God some glory in this place. All right. I'm going to start saying victory belongs to Jesus. I'm going to start singing the song. <laughs> if y'all don't give God some praise in here, I'm going to sing it.